After many long, emotional, and at times excruciating years, one World Trade Center right behind me is finally open for business. For years, deciding how to rebuild the World Trade Center sites has been a point of contention. The design and construction has been fraught with controversy. Use the original blueprints and design the new Trade Center exactly as it had been. I'd rather have nothing than what they're building. We're going to rebuild, and we did. We were not going to stop. And if you've watched our channel before, you'll know that construction isn't exactly finished. In fact, there's a few buildings missing. Two World Trade Center was set for completion years ago, but it's still searching for a tenant and still hasn't settled on a final design. But Five World Trade Center is a different story. Unlike the other commercial skyscrapers on this site, this is the only one intended to be part residential. A new skyscraper will soon be built at Five World Trade Center. The 900-foot tall tower will have 1,200 housing units. That means it comes with an entirely new set of terms and public debate compared to that of an office space. At the same time, New York City is in the middle of a housing crisis with skyrocketing rents and new housing is desperately needed. We need more housing and we need it as fast as we can build it. But this is no ordinary building site and all eyes are set on what the latest World Trade Center Tower will eventually become. Today, Lower Manhattan is the centre for government, international trade and finance, but that wasn't always the case. Before the Twin Towers opened in the 1970s, there was Radio Row, a commercial hub for hundreds of radio and television storefronts. But when plans for the original World Trade Centre were finalised right on top of the neighbourhood in the 1960s, all these shops faced destruction. Concerned for their livelihoods, business owners, along with about 100 local residents, really pushed back. But ultimately, it was to no avail. By the following decade, there sat a new complex of buildings on this site, one that went on to define the New York City skyline and become an integral symbol of the booming financial district. But these buildings didn't stand forever. They were later either destroyed or damaged by the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 altering the skyline and the very soul of this city forever. Despite the tragic events of that day, New Yorkers began to rebuild, but that process wasn't without controversy or lots of drawn-out decision-making. Fast forward to today, and you have One World Trade Center along with three other skyscrapers around a memorial, yet portions of the site still remain empty. Let's take a look at 130 Liberty Street, where the previous Deutsche Bank building had stood. While it wasn't destroyed on 9-11, it was heavily contaminated, and after years of deterioration, the city finally demolished it. Now it remains an empty construction site, waiting for the anticipated Five World Trade Center. Just like the other structures in this district, the idea for its replacement has faced a myriad of revisions and public scrutiny. Daniel Liebskind, the architect behind the original master plan for the World Trade Center site, pictured Five World Trade Center as a residential or mixed-use tower that looked something like this. And in 2007, New York City officials outlined a plan for a 42-story office tower with JP Morgan as the anchor tenant. But none of these ideas ever came to fruition, and the site continued to sit vacant. Then, in 2019, Governor Cuomo made a new request for designs that could be either residential or commercial. A couple of years later, Silverstein Properties and Brookfield Place unveiled a development for a 274-metre mixed-use building filled with apartments, office and retail space. Designed by Combe Pedersen Fox, the skyscraper would have a floor-to-ceiling glass facade with steel-framed windows and rounded corners. It was a bit of a visual contrast alongside the neighbouring all-glass buildings on the site, like One World Trade Centre. The building also had several terraces filled with greenery, including a wide space around the middle which looks like it was intended for residential amenities. But the public debate hasn't revolved so much around the design of the building, instead it's focused on who will actually get to live in it. Back in 2021, 25% of the units were deemed to be affordable housing. But New York City's affordable housing policies are complex, to say the least, and it's certainly no secret that Manhattan rent is expensive. On average, a one-bedroom apartment in this city rings up to a staggering $5,588 a month, 
Prices that have made finding somewhere affordable to live an increasing struggle for many New Yorkers. Now, the city has a few main ways to address its housing issues. It maintains public housing developments, provides federal subsidies to some families, and caps the price of certain units in some buildings, like in Five World Trade Center. To qualify for these so-called affordable units, residents must meet certain income requirements based on the household's percentage of the area median income. Then, they must enter into a lottery system for the chance to rent one of the coveted apartments. But just because the program is called affordable housing doesn't mean it's necessarily affordable in the way that most of us might expect. Those units are reserved for people making between 40 and 120 percent of the area median income. And those numbers are based on the median income for all of New York City. And I think some of New York suburbs are included in, in those calculations. For a family of three, it's an income of between $50,000 on the low end and then $152,000 on the high end. Under this system, one of those coveted apartments will roughly go for $1,300 to $3,800 a month. Ever since the percentage of affordable housing in Five World Trade Center was announced, New Yorkers have had their fair share of opinions on what it should or shouldn't be. Although 25% of the 1,200 units were originally dedicated towards low-income residents, activists have been fighting to make it 100% affordable, with a portion reserved for 9-11 survivors and their families. While at first glance that might make a lot of sense, it would run up a hefty bill, a $500 million government subsidy to be exact, according to the site's developer. They said the money could go towards 3,600 units across the city instead of just 1,200 units inside Five World Trade Center. But hold on a moment, what do we mean by government subsidy? Well, with the high price of land and construction in New York, building affordable housing just isn't very attractive to developers. The margins aren't there, and when luxury property is in demand, it's an easier business decision to build that instead. To make affordable housing work on sites like this, the government has to step in and subsidize its construction at taxpayers' expense. They effectively have to pay developers to build affordable housing. Right now, the economic conditions for affordable housing to be organically constructed don't really exist in Manhattan. It has to be engineered. Which begs the question, will the conditions ever exist again? And if not, what does that mean for the future of this city? Despite these dynamics, activists at Five World Trade Center didn't back down from their demands for more affordable units. And after a couple of years of back and forth, New York Governor Kathy Hochul eventually reached a new deal in 2023. The number of affordable units would increase from 330 to 400, with 80 reserved for survivors of 9-11 and their families. Overall, this change will cost the state roughly $60 million in funding, with an additional $5 million coming from local authorities. As for the remaining 20% of the building space, 12% is going to go towards offices, and the rest is going to be made up of a mix of retail and public amenities for residents. Over two decades have passed since 9-11, and during that time, the World Trade Center site has seen several stops and starts towards its complete rebuilding. With this latest announcement finalized, construction for Five World Trade Center is now expected to begin in 2024. It's the latest step in what the site has been envisioned to become ever since the decision was made to rebuild it all those years ago. Plans for Two World Trade Center have been up in the air for years, but perhaps with Five World Trade Center now seemingly progressing, the rest will soon follow. This video was sponsored by Bluebeam. You can learn more about them at the link below. There's also the chance to dive deeper on this and other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, Make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.